morning. Welcome to this episode of Shepherd's View. Now, I have to tell you, Ruby and I are enjoying family in our home at this moment. Uh, our daughter, her husband, Justin, our daughter, Jen, and her husband, Justin, and um, as I've mentioned, our grandson, Henry, who's six, and uh, of course, the uh, family Cocker Spaniel, Chewy, <laughs> is all with us. We haven't seen them since Thanksgiving of 2019, so you can imagine the fun that we're having right now with our six-year-old grandson, Henry. He is every bit of what a six-year-old should be. He can be loud. He can be interrupting. No, oh, he can pout when you tell him no. He can demand attention. He loves ringing the doorbell and sliding the pocket doors to my study. And little thought is given uh, to what comes out of his mouth. Um, Grandpa and Grandma chuckle, and Mom and Dad wince, but all in all, we got to remember, he's six, you know? He gets scolded, he gets disciplined, that's how he learns, but don't forget, he's six. <laughs> he gives the best hugs. His imagination is unending. Matter of fact, the other afternoon, I slipped out of here a little bit early, and we went to Mayaka State Park, walked on a couple trails and did a couple things like that, and went and seen the alligators. Well, Henry had his uh, wooden sword that he had gotten for Christmas from Grandpa and Grandma, and uh, it became a machete. And as he went down the trail, he was chopping on... Um, palmetto bushes and fallen limbs and everything, and he was preparing to set up base camp uh, for his survival crew. Uh, all of this as we're walking down this trail, his imagination just running out there and loving it, watching him uh, go with that. He forgives quickly, <laughs> and he's persistent. You know, it's Grandpa, come play a game with me. Grandpa, let's go do this. Grandpa, why are you doing that? Or one of my favorite uh, little sayings he has is while we're playing a video game together, which is that's, that's what you do these days. <clears throat> He's playing a video game together, and I'm struggling. He'll look at me, and he says, Grandpa, do you need some help? <laughs> well, <clears throat> he's six. He's full of life. And it's all right for all to, it's all out there for everyone to see. He's not worried about what to eat. He's not uh, worried about what he's going to wear or what he's going to get, um, who's going to pay the bills or where he's going to sleep. He just knows he needs to get his schoolwork done and play. Pick up his toys every now and then and play. He trusts mom and dad, grandpa and grandma to do the rest. You know, I realize there are children out there, I am acutely aware of that, I've even worked in it, that don't have that privilege. And their childhood has been snatched from them. It's, it's difficult and it's a crime that that should happen. Children should have their childhood. Maybe you were one of those children. And I like what one of our res residents told me one day. Um, <clears throat> we were kind of talking about some things, and she shared something that her brother told her many years ago, and it stuck with her, and it stuck with me as well. And, it's, uh, and it's, it's this. He said, it's never too late to have a happy childhood. Hmm. I'll let you ponder those thoughts. Jesus shared these words. Um, we find this scripture here in Matthew 13, and it says this, At the time the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? To kind of set this story up, we looked to some of the other gospels for that, but oh, the children had been coming to Jesus, and they were trying to shoo him away and get him out of the way. They were just being a pest. And Jesus really scolded his disciples about it and said, No, let them come to me. I want to bless them. I want them around me. And the disciples, in a conversation on who was going to be the greatest, 
Jesus set it straight. And then he said, he called one of the little children to him and he set him in the midst of them and said, assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you, be, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives one little child like this in my name receives me. Jesus said, let me tell you who's the greatest in the kingdom. It's this little child, this little child that you thought was bothering me. This little child that is sometimes too loud for you, whose curiosity gets them into things just to see how it works, who are persistent and interruptive at times. Guess what? That's who the greatest in the kingdom is. Unpretentious love, imagination, dreams, and all the things that make a child so adorable. They're the greatest. Let me ask you today, when was the last time you played? When was the last time you just rested in the fact that your dad, Father God, had it covered? When was the last time you imagined? When was the last time that you came to the Father just like a child? I'm not talking childishness. I'm talking about when was the last time you came to the Father like that unencumbered six-year-old. So thanks, Henry, for reminding Grandpa who's the greatest in the kingdom. Let's pray. Gracious Father, thank you so much this day. May we come to you as children, playful and without all the things of the world attached to us, but just natural imagination and playfulness and love and care. May we come to you. Lord, forgive us for the manipulative, pretentious ways adults often conduct their lives. But may we be as children. Lord, we thank you for the children in our lives. We ask your blessing upon them. And Lord, as we receive them, we receive you. And we are grateful. All of this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.